can we help kids be healthy and thrive even in seriously stressful times? Well, today we are joined by former California Surgeon General, pediatrician, and author Dr. Nadine Burke Harris to shed light on the effects of hard things that happen to kids, things like childhood trauma and adversity, and how to help them. Good morning, Dr. Harris. Good morning. Yeah, so how does stress affect kids, and are there signs that we can watch for to notice that there maybe is a problem? Yeah, so we know that stress can actually affect kids' health. And when that stress is severe or prolonged, as with adverse childhood experiences, like uh, experiencing abuse or neglect or growing up in a household where a parent is struggling with substance dependence or their mental health or where there's parental separation or divorce, that these things can actually lead to a prolonged activation of the body's stress response, something that doctors now call toxic stress. And this all these stress hormones can lead to increased risk for things like uh, diabetes or asthma or depression. And in the long term, they can increase risk for serious health conditions like heart disease and cancer. So we, we now are understanding from the science how it's happening. And we also know that early detection and early intervention really improves outcomes. Oh, wow. Yeah, it sounds like we really do need to, to get to it as soon as possible. Are there specific things that we would notice in kids uh, that are dealing with this? Yeah, so for some kids, uh, you may see changes in their sleep or their appetite. Uh, maybe kids who might, you might see some regression, like uh, for little kids going back to bedwetting or things like that. But for some kids, you'll also see changes in their behavior, difficulty regulating their impulses or controlling their behavior. Mm -hmm. For some kids, we, we won't see uh, so much of that. And that is why it's really important for us to uh, do this uh, screening for early detection, early intervention, but as a parent, one of the most important things that we can do is just tune in to our kids, to be the safe, stable, and nurturing relationships and environments that we know actually biologically helps kids be able to regulate their stress. Oh, that is great. Any other tips that you think we should be doing to help kids uh, protect them from toxic stress? One of the most important things that we understand is that uh, you know, as adults, we, we, that being that safe and stable relationship is the antidote to toxic stress. But for most of us, our own stressor, what we experience in our own childhood, can easily be handed down from generation to generation if we don't, you know, get really mindful about intervening. And in West Virginia alone, the cost of adverse childhood experiences to health and lost productivity is $107 billion per year. So we know that these solutions have to be at the household level, at the individual family level, but they also have to be systemic mm -hmm. in terms of early detection and early intervention. Yeah, that, that is alarming. So what are yes. some things that you think we should be doing and where can we go to find more information about this so we can help our families? So. One of the most important thing is just to learn more. Uh, you can check out numberstory.org or check out my book, The Deepest Well, Healing the Long-Term Effects of Childhood Adversity. And again, learning to regulate the stress response through safe and stable and nurturing relationships, through things like regular exercise, mindfulness, mental health interventions, all of these things help to reduce the likelihood of long-term negative health consequences. Yeah, some of those are very simple things that we can start yeah. incorporating. Yeah. Thanks so much for sharing this with us today on Studio 3. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Mm -hmm.